Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and if you are new here, welcome and we are happy to have you as always. I am a mixed media abstract artist and today we are working on another mixed media collage. Uh, so I'm starting this one out similarly to the ones that I have started before if you've seen any of my other videos. Uh, this time though I am using a 9x12 gallery wrapped canvas as opposed to boards because I just happen to be out of the boards. And I do not like using the canvases as much as I like the boards, but it's what I had, so we're gonna go with it. So this is a gessoed canvas, and I started out just with some mark making with a regular pencil, and then I laid down some uh, fluorescent red paint and some magenta paint, because I wanted to do this one in a little bit of a different color palette than the darker, more subdued ones that I typically do. So this is going to be a little on the brighter side. And I got some new tools that I'm using. Uh, I've got some paint shapers, which you'll have to forgive me in this process because I've never used them before and I have absolutely no idea what to actually do with them. But I've seen other people use them successfully and I thought, well, I'm gonna give them a try. I found them on Amazon. I can put a link down in the description for you or at least a material list if I haven't figured out the links by the time I have this video edited because you know me in technology. So now I'm actually just going into that wet paint and carving into it with the back end of a, of a uh, not a toothbrush, a paintbrush, and just putting some further marks in. All this process is about for me is building up layers, as many layers as possible, different types of layers and textures. Each of the things that I do will add something to the piece, even though they might be getting covered up, something will remain of it, even if it's just a very light texture in the background it adds visual interest and impact. So you will see many times through this process, as you're probably familiar with working with me by now, I these things go through many different phases. And I like to try new techniques and just keep trying and keep going until I get something that speaks to me. And then that is the idea that I will push further. That is how the intuitive process works for me. So on top of these very bright reds, I put a little bit of Naples yellow, sprayed some water on it and let it drip down. And I don't love the way it looks as is. So I wiped some of it away so that you can see the red underneath, which I do like that effect a lot. Again, it's all just about layers. And I wanted to have a little bit of a bright pop here. So I'm putting in some Artist's Loft, uh, I believe that's the turquoise. And I love that color so much. If It's the Michaels brand. The saturation of color and opacity in that is awesome and I absolutely love it. I would highly recommend it if you are into that color and looking for a really cheap, but uh, when I say cheap, I mean inexpensive, but yet pretty decent quality paint. I love doing these pieces because I never know what I'm going to end up with. And it's really kind of cool for me just to see what the end product looks like because maybe sometimes I have a slight idea in my mind, but these intuitive pieces are all about the process of having a conversation between yourself and the, the art itself. And you don't always get to have all of the say in this, which I love. The art kind of comes forth and tells you what your next step is, so I never really know, and it's kind of just been such a cool process. And doing these videos and having to have one completed every week, because that's a goal that I set for myself, it really forces me to maybe take a little more, um, take more chances and be a little more daring, because, you know, I've set my goal to have a piece completed every week. So something has to go down on that canvas. And well, whether I like it or not, I have to just keep moving forward. But at some point, the piece always speaks to me and I am typically pretty happy with the outcome. Okay, so here I am just adding some collage with some cut book pages that I just cut a shape out of and I'm adhering it with some matte gel medium as I have done in most of my videos. These were just kind of random on the spot shapes that I cut out. It is a shape that does appear in my work and kind of always has if I go back even for the last several decades. Um, more organic shapes are kind of my thing and that's kind of what I've got going on here. So I'm just going to 
adhere these down and then add a little bit of paint to brighten things up. I think the paint that I'm going to add is the green gold, which is a great color. It's nice and transparent and just adds just the perfect amount of warmth to a piece when I'm looking for that. I love using book pages as collage material. They're just kind of like the perfect thickness because I want something that is, sometimes I want something that is going to kind of have a little bit of structure to it so that it doesn't instantly just disintegrate when I lay it down in the way that some of my gel prints on tissue paper do. Now granted, sometimes that is a desirable quality and I definitely want that. But in this case, sometimes I do want hard edges because paint will build up around those and that's a quality that I also look for. So I find that the book pages are kind of like the best thickness for that and they just kind of work really well for me and you'll see these appear in a lot of my collages. I'm just going to interject right here. I had some sort of a technical glitch with my phone where it stopped recording. I don't know why it's doing that, um, other than the fact that it's over four years old and phones just don't live forever, I guess. Um, but I do ask your forgiveness on that. I'm gonna really quickly talk about what we missed. Um, so I went in with some more of this fluorescent red in a lot of different spots here and then wiped some of it away. I went over this area here, this dark blue area that I didn't like at the bottom. And that is kind of where I left it. So we're picking up here from that point. Again, so sorry for the glitch. Now I decided to try to go through some of my gel prints and find some bolder patterns to add to the piece and I kind of just went and pulled my black and white prints. Those are my go-to for looking for contrast obviously. Um, I picked some that have just a very faint amount of black on them like that there so I'm going to get more of the tissue paper than the actual paint that's on it but that's okay because the tissue paper is going to kind of melt into the background and we're going to get to see a muted version of the colors and patterns underneath which is one reason why I really like using the tissue. It's a really good way to if you want to instantly add kind of a muted tonality to a piece put some tissue over it and it will give you that quality. You can see it already there. Some of the pattern is coming back through and definitely some of the color is coming through. It's just a little bit of a different tone, which I love. And it's putting some of those little black dots on the top too, which from a distance that we are watching it from now almost looks to be the same kind of shape and size as the letters on the book pages, even though it's really not. They're much smaller but it kind of gives that kind of cohesiveness. And then I found this other much darker, um, highly contrasted piece with larger dots on it, but it's still the dots, so it kind of still makes sense. And when I was putting that on there, you probably saw the card dragged across it and ripped a piece off, but that's okay because I was going to go in and do that intentionally anyway, and that kind of just gave me a undetermined pattern, I guess, which goes along with the rest of my intuitive process. So it kind of just happened and I'm just kind of roll with it. I ended up taking that piece that ripped off and putting it just to the left there, as you can see. And I'm adding a bit more of that pattern to kind of carry it over and through. And again, just all about building layers and adding more interest. And I just really love this part of the process because while there isn't yet a clear direction 
this is almost like a foolproof anything goes kind of part where you can just be really free and grab any paper or any paint or make any design that you want and it's all being a part of the layered process and going into the background so it's not going to really matter yet until you finally make that final call on what the I'll say subject even though it's a non-traditional a non-representational piece but there will still be a clear subject to the piece once it's done otherwise it's just a bunch of background material and it kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense but just keep watching and you'll see I decided to add even more of the more blank tissue paper on. Some of it has a little bit of design, but there are just large patches of plain paper because I'm really enjoying the way that that is adding that tonality. It's almost creating a translucent patchwork kind of effect that I really like. And that's an idea that I'd like to push really a lot further in a larger piece at some point in the future. Maybe just doing an entire canvas of nothing but large patches of color and tissue on top just to see what happens. I think it would be a fun exercise, even if I don't end up loving the outcome. And if it ends up just looking too much like a background, because sometimes these things do, then I can always add to it. And, you know, a piece is never finished until you say it's finished. So if it looks unfinished to you, then it probably is. That's something that I mentioned in my last video, but people often ask me how I know when my work is finished because it's not like I am drawing a picture of a tree or doing a portrait or something like that where there is a clear end point. This is all intuitive abstract, so how do I know when it's finished? Well, the answer to that is I know because the piece tells me, and I know that probably sounds ridiculous, but it's the truth. When I look at it and no longer want to keep working on it and I'm satisfied that it is a finished piece, then it's finished. That's the simplest answer to that. Okay, so here I decided I wanted to add a little more warmth and brightness to it. So I went back in with some of that green gold and I'm just applying that with an old gift card that I like to use there. And what, you'll see what's happening. Those cutout pieces, because they are just a little tiny bit deeper on the inside of the cutouts than on the outside. It's letting some of that paint just skim over the top of the cutout so you're still able to see the color underneath, which I really like. And when that doesn't happen and it gets filled in, you can just go in and wipe some of that away. Now I'm using the matte gel medium because that's just the, the one that I prefer to use as an adhesive. But if you were using gloss gel, which I do add some here in a little bit, you would be able to just go in and wipe that off because that is basically acrylic paint without the pigment. I mean, it's slightly different, but just for the, the purposes of, of this explanation here. So all it basically is doing is adding like a nice layer of like a plasticky waterproof coating. So you're able to just go in and as long as the paint is still wet, wipe it right off, which kind of can be nice because if you've got something down there that you just absolutely hate and don't even want to bother painting over, you can just take it right off. Or if you want to push a little bit of a contrast and wipe some color away, that's perfect for it. You can do that to an extent with the matte gel medium as well, but um, because it's matte, it's gonna grab a little bit more of the paint, a little bit, yeah, a little bit more of the paint that you're putting on top of it and maybe not release quite as much. Again, that doesn't bother me and that's why I choose to use it. I'm just going back in here with a little bit more of the fluorescent red. I'm really loving these fluorescent colors. I have had the pink for a while. I just got the red and I want to get some more. Unfortunately, when I went to Michael's the other day, the only one they had left was red and a blue that I didn't love. But 
I kind of have a feeling this red is going to get a lot of use because I'm already really loving it every time it touches my collage here. So now the background is done to a point that I'm satisfied with it, but I feel like it needs a focal point. And I guess that's kind of more what I meant when I said subject. It's not an actual subject, but it needs to have an intentional focus, focal point rather than just having a bunch of design in the background, at least for me for this piece. So I went in here and I wanted to get a larger shape of the same kind of shapes that I had been using so that it made sense. But no matter what I did, <laughs> this is like three different attempts to get the one that I liked, which I finally did. I like the shape of that one, but then I went ahead and mangled that bottom left corner and took it off and didn't like that. I should have left it there. So after a couple more attempts here with some more tissue paper, I finally got a shape that I was happy with and went ahead and adhered that down to the canvas. Um, so when you've got a large shape cut out of tissue paper, it is of course gonna be very fragile and a little finicky to get down. So my advice to you there is just to work in sections with it, start from the top and start gluing the top down and smoothing it and you know, just work slowly and carefully unless you don't care, which, I didn't really care all that much because the wrinkles add a little bit of something in my opinion. And plus for this shape, I mean, it was literally just a shape. So it's not like it had to completely retain its form, but just something to keep in mind if you're going to do this technique, just be very careful because you'll see here in a minute, it just wants to bunch up and kind of it, it will definitely tear because of the tissue paper because I'm just using the regular tissue, not the wet strength again here for this. So you'll see me adjusting and readjusting and pulling up and smoothing out, but just take your time with it and you will eventually be able to get it down in a way that works for you. I'm going in with my card here just to lift up a little bit where it's not exactly laying the way I want it to. And then I'm just using the card again to smooth down the medium that I put on top. Be very careful when you're doing this because it is tissue and it will catch and it will tear. I did that in a couple of areas, but I didn't really mind too much because again, I'm gonna be going in and doing further treatment to this. So it wasn't 100% important to me that all of the edges remained 100% intact as to the shape that I cut. But once I get this all glued down here, I'm going to give it some time to let it dry, which I've done between all of the layers, and that's really important too. I did mention that in the beginning, but um, wet paint will smear, obviously, and the colors will mix, and if you want that, that's cool, and sometimes I want that effect too, but sometimes I want to have a nice clean dry surface to work on so that I can build and not necessarily muddy it up from one color to the next. Okay, so I let it dry and I added an entire layer over the whole top of the gloss gel medium, which is why you can see it looks a little bit shiny now. And I did this for a reason because now I'm going to go in with my darker colors and create some shadow along the inside of some of the cutouts and I want to be able to remove as much paint as I need to. I just really kind of want to get it around the edges there. And with, like I said before, with the gloss gel, you're going to be able to do that. I'm just wetting a shop towel there and you can see it's wiping right off, but it is leaving just a little bit in the crevices that the cutouts make from one page to the other, one layer to the other. So that's why I went ahead and did that. Again, I typically don't like the gloss gel as much as the matte because I want to be able to make the decision at the very end 
whether or not I want a gloss on the final piece. Most times I do put some sort of gloss on it, but they do make top coat sprays in a matte finish or satin finish. So it's nice to, for me to just be able to have that choice. I don't always want the gloss. But anyway, now I'm going in with a little bit of Burnt Sienna to warm everything up a bit. That's my absolute favorite go-to color to do that. And I'm adding a little bit of the matte gel medium just to make the color, which is already pretty transparent, even more transparent. That's a fun trick that I always use with the gel mediums. You can do it with the matte or the gloss. And I'm using the matte here this time because I wanna go back to a little bit of a matte finish. So, I just mix that in and basically it creates like a glaze over the whole piece. I'm still able to see definitely shapes and patterns come through underneath there, but I'm also able to see color differentiation too. It does add a glaze, but you can clearly tell what was red and what was green, what was black. It's just kind of a nice glazing effect. And I think it was here in this moment that I decided how I wanted to finish the piece. So. I've got a fine tooth, I keep wanting to say toothbrush. It's not a toothbrush, it's definitely a paintbrush. I have a very fine paintbrush that I'm going in with now and outlining all around the cutout shape. And there was almost a black line up at the top leading off of the canvas already. So I just went ahead and pushed that line a little bit, added another one at the bottom. And then I kind of just decided that I was gonna finish it just with some black lines. And this is a, I believe a Mars black Liquitex paint, and it's a nice matte color, which is kind of what I wanted because I do still have some of the gloss coming through, even though I used the matte gel with the burnt sienna. So I wanted that matte because it was not only a color contrast, but also a contrast between the matte and the shiny. The black lines are kind of giving the piece an almost stained glass window effect. So again, not what I set out to do, but kind of just what happened, which is again, why I just love this process so much. I never know what I'm going to get. And at some point when you work like this, at least for me, I will just be you know, going on and working and doing whatever technique I happen to be using, but something will grab my attention. My eye will get pulled in a direction and it will suddenly become clear, okay, that's where this needs to go. And that's kind of what happened here with these black lines. It may not be everybody's cup of tea, but it works for me and I'm very pleased with the way that it turned out. I have a minute here, so I wanted to throw out there a thing that I might be doing here in the future. There is a, an exhibit that I apply for every year, and I will be applying for it again. Um, it's a droid exhibit, and I'm going to be doing a very large scale one of these uh, collage type pieces. I think it's going to be a little too difficult to put it into weekly videos just from the size of it and the recording equipment that I have. So I was thinking about maybe just adding a little segment at the end of some future videos as like a progress report of how the piece is going. So I think I'm probably going to be doing that. So look for that in some upcoming videos. I haven't started it yet. I was waiting for the boards to uh, get shipped to me and I think they are here now. So I should be starting that this week, hopefully. But anyway, just wanted to mention that but as far as this piece goes, it is just about done. I had, I'd worked on it in one di direction the whole entire way. And while I was putting some of the lines in, decided that I absolutely loved it in the other direction. So that's how I ended up finishing the piece. And that can happen too. Um, I felt it needed a little bit more of a pop of color right there in the middle. So I went back in with some of the fluorescent red and I'm gonna also go back in with some more of that green gold and it's going to just brighten it up and pop it in a way that I think it really needed to stand out from the background.
Now I'm just adding some finishing touches, a few lines and a little more texture in places that I thought could use it. Kind of just going back around all those edges that I wanted to get some more paint up close to. And that's kind of basically it. Please excuse my cat Gomez meowing in the background. He is trying with all of his might to get my attention right now. But other than a few more little touch up pieces, this piece is basically done. I will of course have it up and on display at the very end of the video so you can see it. Um, this piece will be up for sale in my Etsy store as of the airing of this video, I hope. So I'll put a link and please stop by and check that out. No obligation ever if you wanna just take a look. I do have some other of my pieces in there. I'm meaning to actually get the whole thing loaded up. It's just been a slow process, but Anyway, I'll give you guys a thank you right now. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate you all stopping in. I really appreciate your comments. They are always so helpful. I love hearing what you like and what you don't like. I love hearing suggestions. It really kind of just makes my day. So please never hesitate. If you have any questions or just something you want to say, pop in. I do answer all comments. And if you haven't had a chance yet, Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up on your way out if you enjoyed the video. It helps out my channel so much and thank you to everyone who has already done that. I appreciate you all more than you could know. And stay tuned for the finished piece here coming up in just a second.